Hello, my name is Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the Resourceful CEO. And today I'm here to talk to you about building a relationship with your banker and why it is so critical. I have spoken on the subject many, many times. And although I've spoken to audiences of black business owners, female business owners, or other minority business owners, I've never actually said, hey, you as an African American or a woman need to do this specifically. It's not that there's, that you need to do a whole lot more, but it's just that I need you guys to think um, broader and think about the relationships that you do have and think, instead of thinking, it is difficult for me to get a loan, I need you to think, I can get a loan, what's the best entity and the best person who can serve me? So it's a, a bit of a mindset shift because I just hear so often how difficult it is for black, black business owners especially to get funding. And I'm not saying that that's not the case. What I am saying is that uh, what you believe and expect is what you also get. So like, you know, law of attraction, but what you focus on and what you believe and get is what happens. I remember a, so mindset is just critical. I had a, 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 um, a potential, a prospective client who came to me because he was a plumbing, he was a plumber and I think he was doing about 300,000 in revenue and he wanted to grow to half a million and he kept, and he said he couldn't get a bank loan. Well, at the time I had relationships with, I don't know, about 12 different banks and I was confident that if I, if his financials were what he said they were, I did not see them, but if they were what he said they were, that I could get him a loan. Well, every time I said, send me your financials, I'll review them and we'll, and I'll talk to a couple of bankers and set up a meeting and I'll go with you. He would say, well, I, I can't get one. I just can't get a loan. No one wants to give me a bank loan. And I'd tell him what I was going to do. No, no one wants to give me a bank loan. I just can't get one. This happened, I don't know, about four times, not to mention uh, the number of emails that he sent me saying he couldn't get one. And so I just said, you know what? He can't. Here I am offering to help him. Here I am with these relationships. I'm telling him that, again, assuming his financials were what they said they were, that we could get him a bank loan. And if his financials weren't, then I would have worked with him because that's what I do to strengthen his financials, strengthen his business so that he could get a bank loan. And I'd work with him to determine what options he could take advantage of until he did qualify for a bank loan. And maybe he could get, you know, he may have aspired to a $200,000 line of credit. Maybe he could only get a $50,000 line of credit. But as we improve some things, then we could increase that um, quarter over quarter. Anyways, so that's why I say mindset is so important. If you keep saying, I can't, then you can't. You don't hear, even when the solution is right in front of you, you don't hear it, you block it. So that is just, that. I, I just have to repeat that. And that's, he's the most dramatic example I have, but there's many times that I've encountered people have told me what they can't do and uh, and after that, it's just a turn off. You tell me you can't, then I say, okay, you can't. <laughs> Next, you tell me it's difficult, then I ask you, what kind of difficulty are you having? So um, th that's very different. Can't and difficult are very different. Difficult means you may not have the answer and it may be taking a lot of your time, but there is a solution. Can't means there's no other options. Okay, so let's come back to why it's so important to have a business banker. Um, and then let's talk about how you go about finding one and holding on to them. So 
a business banker to me is someone who is VP level or above. And again, it depends on where you're at um, because some companies have a, some banks have a portfolio, um, not a portfolio, they have a, a committee, sorry, that was the wrong word, a committee decision making uh, methodology, which means that on any loan over a particular size, they sit down and talk about who they're going to lend money to and why. So the banker doesn't make the, the decision alone, it's the committee that makes the decision. But your business banker has to be able to defend why they're saying you should get this loan. And so if you have a relationship with them, they understand your business, they've seen your financials, they know what you're trying to do, you've been keeping them updated at least on a quarterly basis, then they can go to bat for you. Or, or, or even if you're just initially starting out with them, if they have an executive summary, you sat down and spoke to them about your intentions, the executive summary, they have good financials, not so, <laughs> I've seen some crazy looking financials, but they have good verifiable financials, then yes, they can readily say, you know, I believe this company, da, 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 and I think they'll be a great long-term customer and so on. And so these people t typically have signature authority or decision-making authority in a committee of $250,000 or above. Again, it depends on the bank. Some banks have seen it be as high as $750,000 uh, decision-making authority before it goes to a committee. But then others, like I said, do committee. Uh, but the point is VP level or above and I really like community banks. Community banks focused on entrepreneurs and business owners. There are some community banks that focus on individuals and they will tend to be extremely conservative when it comes to business owners. But if you get a community bank that's focused on business owners, then lots of times they have board members who are entrepreneurs. Um, they work with a lot of entrepreneurs and so they understand what you're going through and they just understand a bunch of different things. And they tend to work, a lot of their customers tend to be companies with 10 million or below. And so if you have more than 10 million, <laughs> your gold, if you have, uh, you know, 500,000 to a million, you're good and a million to 10 million, you're great. So uh, versus the Chase's, Wells Fargo, Citibanks of the world. To them, you're really not that big unless you're a hundred million. And there's, even when they say small business, they typically mean 20 million and up. So when you're a small business and you're under 10 million, you're really, you're, you're, you're either gonna be funneled to their SBA group um, or you're just not going to or you're just basically going to be ignored except for transactions. Um, and that's the problem. You Like I had a client who was a member who banked with Chase and he wanted, <laughs> he wanted to, he, he wanted, he'd been banking with them for 15 years and he wanted to, uh, he had had several, he had had a line of credit for years he had had a term loan to build out the factory and he had a, uh, and he had paid that one back. And now he wanted a smaller loan to, to build, to finish building out the front. And he had to talk to four people to get two different loans approved. And they still, and they wouldn't give him what he wanted. So I connected him to two uh, community banks and he went with the larger community bank and got exactly what he wanted so uh, and now they have a long now they have an ongoing relationship and he's actually going to sell that business to employees and the bank is uh, very interested in that and so the bank believes that they'll be able to finance the sale to the employees so it, this is why it's so important to have a banking relationship and if you don't have one go get one, go to your community bank, 
Uh, there's community bankers belong to all kinds of business associations. They, be they may belong to your church. So just ask around and see, in, you know, when you talk to people, ask them, well, look at their card or ask them what they do. If they're VP level or above, ask, tell them that you're looking for a, a business banker and you would love to have, make an appointment to meet with them. Here's another example. I had a client who, uh, 50 million, actually it was a larger company, a $50 million company. And this was a majority, a white male owned form, firm. Um, and they had been doing fine, but they decided to self-finance their expansion just using their operational cash flow and their uh, line of credit. And <laughs> unfortunately, they always said follow the lender. That's not unfortunate, but in this case it was. In this case, they had an issue. But they um, they had followed the lender. That was the, I think their lender had, yeah, their lender had changed banks three years before, and that was fine. They changed banks, followed the lender. Um, but then the their banker actually <laughs> got a job in Dubai. So they could not follow him to Dubai. He was not doing transactions, US-based transactions in Dubai. So, um, and then their loan, their line of credit came up for his annual review. And the new person who took over their loan, who took over their account said, oh, I don't know them. I don't, they seem a little iffy. They seem to be kind of stressed on the, uh, you know, in terms of their cash flow, which of course they had been because they had just done this big expansion the previous year. And anyways, they called the line of credit and they gave them uh, three months to pay it off. So, and even that took a little bit of negotiation. I was not involved in that. I came in after the, after this fact. But, um, so one thing what I would say is after you find your banker, have a backup banker. But the first thing is find your banker. It's rare that the that your banker will move to Dubai or I don't know, Ireland or something. <laughs> or wherever. Um what's a great tax haven? Uh, um the Cayman Islands. Well you could anyways. Um the so just be very so let's be very clear. It's crucial that you have a business banker. A business banker is someone who is a VP level or, at a, or above, um, who has decision-making authority of 250,000 or more, or they have significant participation in the, in the committee that makes the decisions about loans. You want a community bank because, a business-focused community bank because community banks focus on smaller businesses like yours and they will give you the time and the effort and they appreciate what you're doing so they would they're interested in the line of credit interested in loans to acquire buildings later on interested in um helping you finance an acquisition um so when you and then when you finally do sit down and meet with this business banker in the first meeting, you will bring an executive summary because you're going to have a sit down, like a half an hour, 45 minute discussion with this person. This is not a drop by, this is a, a scheduled meeting. And you go over your executive summary where you talk about your business background, what you're doing, what you had been doing, how you're doing now, what you plan to do in the future. You provide your financials, preferably the last three years financials, just in a, just, you know, balance sheet. You can have it all on one page with comparisons, actually, like income statement, um, balance sheet, or you could have income statement and balance sheet for, you know, the last three years, one after the other. I like to do comparisons, but you don't have to, you don't have to do that. Um, and you, and you provide that as a leave behind. Um, don't read the executive summary. Just talk about your business following basically 
the flow of the executive summary so that you're succinct and so on. And then the lender will ask you questions. The bank will ask you questions about what you want to do and so on and and uh, whatever. Um, and then once you, you know, so if you're interested in a particular loan, that's when you say it. You say, I, I'm interested in getting a $100,000 line of credit. Currently, I have a $25,000 line of credit with whatever, or I'm interested in a term loan to buy a building, or I'm interested in uh, financing. I'm looking at another company I want to acquire, whatever. I have a space I need to build out. Whatever it is that you want, say it and say how much you think it will cost. Like I, uh, I, I want to make an acquisition. Um, the I'm looking right now, but it looks like the prices are, um, or the companies that I'm looking at are around a million. And uh, I'm looking to finance as much of that as possible. Uh, is it 25% down or 20 per, you know, I mean, 20% down, whatever. But yes, however much of that I can finance, here's, you know, here's my financials. And the financials show that we have no problem paying it back. Um, so... These are the kinds of things that you want to be able to say. You need to be able to talk about your financials so it sounds like you have a clue. <laughs> if you only, if you just like, here's my financials and then the the the, the banker asks you questions and you're like, I don't know. Do you want, it's, it's called sources and uses of funds. So you want X amount of money, what are you going to use it for? And then I'm a banker. How am I going to, how are you going to pay me back? So that's the biggest thing, debt service, debt service coverage. I mean, there's these ratios. I'll talk about that at, at another time, but there's ratios on the balance sheet that lenders take a look at. That's why it's important for you to have not just your income statement, but your balance sheet when you go in to the lender, uh, to the banker that you're meeting with. Anyways, so this kicks off, off the conversation and uh they'll tell you what they you know they'll just they're not going to say yes I, we can do it typically typically they said let me review all this information and i'll get back to you in a couple of days or whatever and so let me also say this if you get a banker who says they'll get back to you and they don't immediately follow up sometimes things happen and they didn't get back to you but if this happens two or three times and they weren't on vacation, they didn't get swamped by, I don't know, something that happened at the bank or whatever, Some, then they're blowing you off. And lots of, there are sometimes, not lots of times, I have run into some bankers who just thought that a company was a dog, was a dog. Their financials were horrible and they, they didn't think they could finance it and they didn't want to think about um, building up to that or, or, or recommending them to someone else, you know, recommending them to to factoring firms or account uh, um, uh, account finance, account receivables financing firms or, or so on. They just didn't want anything to do with them. And so they, they don't respond, they just blow them off. So if you follow up with the lender two times, no more than three, but definitely three, then let them go and find somebody else because you're looking for great service. Yeah, you're looking for great service. You want to give them your business and you want to be respected as a business owner who can help drive profit to their bank. And um, if you're not gonna get it, then just keep on moving. Um, but uh, that's why if you if you um, get referrals and so on, or you meet people in business association meetings and so on, that's such a great way to strike up the conversation instead of the meeting. They're much more likely to respect you and not try to uh, blow you off. But code calls code calls work. I've done. I have code called before. Actually, many times I've code called lenders. But I ask a certain I ask certain types of questions, and then based on their responses, then I say yes, let's have a meeting. Um, but here's here's another thing. So 
so many times I hear about people trying to shop for interest rates. Who gives a crap? <laughs> I mean, obviously, if someone is charging 5.5% over here, you don't want to go to someone who's charging 8%. But generally speaking, bank loans, you know, maybe within a, an interest, you know, one point. And you can negotiate. Just because they say it doesn't mean that it's set in stone. You can negotiate the terms. Um, you can say such and such bank does this. Can't you give me better terms? You can say that. So, um the relationship is the, the key. The relationship is the driver. So you, if you are shopping rates, you're not building a relationship that's transactional. That is, you do this over here, you do this over, that's not a relationship. A relationship is what helps you grow your company. Transactional does not. It just serves a, a one-off purpose and that's it. So relationships over transactions. Let's say that again relationships over transactions. Let's see. Um, and so, especially as a, a black business owner, and even as a woman, that the, the presentation matters so much. I always call it packaging um, because someone may have a preconceived notion of you, but who cares what they're thinking? The point is that you need to be able to come to them in a fashion, um, in the way that they're used to dealing with people who are successful at building long-term relationships with them. Let me say that again. You need to approach them like others who are successful at building long-term relationships with them do. So that's why I said you go to them you dress nicely. You don't have to wear a suit. You just wear nice business casual. You have set up the meeting professionally called, you know, got on their schedule. You're on time or early. You bring an executive summary. You have your business cards. You have your financial statements there. You're able to answer the questions about your business and your financial statements. You know, if you're actually looking for a loan, you know what loan amount you want and why and how you, in the capacity of your company to pay it back. Um, and you, you, you just, you come across as very knowledgeable, very committed and, and so on. So if you have, um, so when you do that, then you've, you've matched with, you've matched their expectations of someone who will be successful and you've overcome a lot of the stuff that may have been whirling around in their head before you got there. So that's what is so important. Um, I'm not saying that, it, you know, just the one meeting will do it all the time. Lots of times though, that one meeting does do it. It does do it. And if you are nervous or not sure how to do it, then, you know, I know lots of times with my clients, I've actually been the one who initiated these conversations, who actually sat there with them and had the conversations. And what that shows is that you know how to reach out and use other resources, which is also important because small businesses sometimes fail because business owners think they have to do everything themselves and they're not good at reaching out to the other resources that are there to assist them. And obviously by having, um, you know, somebody like me, a fractional COO or, or the consultant there and speaking with them, you know, that's, <laughs> it definitely, it definitely sets them apart, but it's not, it's not necessary. It is something that you can do on your own. I'm just saying that that's always an option if you are. Um, if you just feel intimidated about, you know, reaching out and, and connecting with these people. But if you do that, then you will get a bank loan. And if your financials are kind of sketchy, <laughs> get with a good accountant or get a, a CFO um, um, or someone like me. But get someone to take a look at your numbers and talk to you about, 
better record keeping and strengthening your company so that you have better operational cash flow to be able to pay off the loans that you want. If you've been factoring or anything like that, you need to transition from factoring because that will eat up your profits so quickly. And so you need to have a plan to do that. And you can approach the banker. I mean, I say approach the banker now, even if you're not ready for a loan and tell them your steps. That that builds that builds a lot of respect that you understand what's going on with your business and that you had you, you had some hiccups, but this is how you are handling it now. It really does because it says to them that even if you you stumble in the future because, you know, that's just what happens sometimes. You stumble in the future, they're not going to be at risk of the loan going bad. They might have to do have to like extend the terms or something with you for a little bit. Um but they won't have to write off the loan and come after you. So Again, <laughs> so showing that you had a little bit of struggle in the past and you resolved it is actually a good thing or that you're currently working through some issues, but you, um, but you wanted to start the relationship now and here's your plan and then executing, successfully executing that plan, impressive. All of that is impressive. Um, what else as a, um, black person, you can, there's, you know, if you have a minority owned bank in your, a black owned bank in your, uh, in your area, reach out to them. Now I will say that there's been a few have been extremely conservative. <laughs> I'm not saying all extremely conservative. So their denial rate had been high for larger amounts of money. And I'm talking about like 250,000, half a million, a million, um, for smaller amounts of money. They have been great. Um, but again, that's just my experience uh, based with three banks. So I, I still advocate um, using minority owned banks. Just remember that as you need larger sums of money, you just may run up against a more conservative perspective. Remember what I said, community banks, if they serve more business owners, they're, they're typically going to be more flexible in their terms and have a much stronger business mindset. If they serve more individuals, they tend to be more conservative when it comes to funding businesses. And so that that's the same whether they're black owned or majority owned. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, and then finally, like I said, if you encounter, if you have this great conversation or what you think is a great conversation with a banker and they don't get back to you and uh, after two or three follow-ups cut go to the next go to the next one and have this meeting you want a long-term relationship and sometimes you meet the right person at the right time and it's an automatic fit sometimes you have to do a little bit of dating <laughs> if you have any questions you can reach out to me at the resourceful CEO, uh, the resourceful CEO.com forward slash schedule and uh, complete the form and uh, have a free 20 minute consultation with me. Um, otherwise, best of luck and stay tuned for more videos. Oh, yes, remember to like this video and subscribe.